Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey and all teams. You've predicted the West. I have. I've predicted the West. There are two more members of the Post to Post crew, uh, Jason and Justin. I don't know if Jason's going to predict the, the uh, West because he doesn't watch a lot of the West because he's a Boston fan. He watches a lot of the East. Uh, but Justin has ranked, or not ranked, has predicted the Western Conference for this year. So he's, he's made a video. And uh, I'm excited to see who he picks. I haven't actually watched the video yet. I don't know who he picks. Um, but uh, Justin, take it away. Hey guys, me again. So I'm here today to go over my Western Conference predictions. Now typically I don't prefer doing uh, predictions before the season even starts. However, the more I got into this, it actually became kind of Fun in a lot of ways because there's still a lot of unanswered questions you know uh, how teams are going to be rolling their lines everybody that's going to be in their lineup that sort of thing but based just on the off season we do have a very deep understanding into the main changes that each team in the league but in this case we're just concentrating concentrating on the Western Conference today uh, the changes that they have made to better their lineup their team and franchise from last season so I'm going to start with the Central Division, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick or predict uh, from bottom all the way up to first in the division. Okay, so with the Central Division, I'm going to start with Colorado coming in last in the Central. Surprise, surprise! Uh, you know, Colorado they started the season last year hot because if I remember correctly, Colorado was unbeaten in the preseason. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but it just popped in my head. I think Colorado was unbeaten last year in the preseason. But then as the season just kind of you know chugged along, Colorado just completely fell off the radar, and well, they had an abysmal, abysmal season. Um, you know, I, I see them doing a lot better this year. However, I don't see them actually, you know, competing for a playoff spot or anything like that uh, for the foreseeable future. And the whole Matt Duchesne thing, that's just, to me, that's hanging just such a negative vibe on the entire franchise. And it's kind of making Joe Sackick look bad, too. I really wish he would deal Matt Duchesne. Uh, he really deserves better than what he's getting in Colorado, unfortunately. And second last in that division, I have Minnesota. Ooh, maybe I'm going to get a little flack for that. Uh, I'd always like, I always prefer to see Minnesota do well just because I love seeing that damn jersey. Uh, you know, that, as you know by watching this channel, that Minnesota Wild logo to me is the best logo in professional sports. I absolutely love that thing. And that's going to be one of my next jersey purchases without question. I need to definitely get one. Uh, so next up, I have my beloved Winnipeg Jets. Now, I really wish I could say I'm picking the Jets to uh, come out on top in the Central, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. I absolutely adore and love the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I'm a big Blake Wheeler fan, that's for sure. Brian Little as well, definitely a big fan. Love watching the Jets and their style of play and, of course, the physicality that Dustin Bufflin can, be, uh, can bring. Unfortunately, I don't see the Jets being a playoff team yet. Uh, you know, the addition of Line A definitely really helps their firepower. And I'm predicting it now. I think Line A is going to definitely be in the top two in goal scoring this year. Am I going to pick them right now to win the Rocket? Mm, I don't know. But I definitely think he will be competing for it hardcore this year. Uh, with the Winnipeg Jets. Next up, I have St. Louis. Sadly, I kind of see St. Louis going a little bit on a downward trend. Uh, to me, St. Louis has had some fabulous teams over the last decade. Absolutely fabulous. And I used to look at St. Louis and I picked them to really go far uh, in the playoff picture. But it just seems that when St. Louis started getting really hot, that's when Chicago was kind of building uh, their empire to win Stanley Cups. And, you know, the Chicago-St. Louis thing, man, that kind of went on for quite some time. And, uh, you know, anytime it seems poor St. Louis would run into Chicago, it was always Chicago coming out on top. And uh, unfortunately, I see St. Louis actually going in this direction now uh, for the foreseeable future. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. That's just uh, my prediction. So 
third in the Central, I am picking Dallas. I think Dallas is going to have a real turnaround year. I see them finishing third in the division. Uh, you know, the addition of Mark Mathot on the blue line. Of course, Ben Bishop's not a pushover either. But I honestly think Radulov is going to help this team a lot. But if you throw all three of them together, uh, Dallas has really done a lot of incredible things to better their lineup for this upcoming season. And I really think it's going to pay off big for them and uh, hey kudos to them right so next up I have Nashville so I don't have Nashville winning the division I have them coming in second uh, they're a solid ho hockey club uh, they really are you know they had the Cinderella run in uh, the playoffs this year making it right to the cup final and ultimately losing to the Pittsburgh Penguins but to me I almost look at Nashville as kind of overachieving a little bit I mean I would have never predicted them to go to the cup final and I'm sure many people didn't predict them to go to the cup final but it did give them a lot of experience and it did make them realize that hey you know maybe we are a team that's better than a lot of critics and analysts give us credit for so you know I see them being competitive but I don't see them going uh, all the way it would be the best way to put it now number one in the division in the central I have the Chicago Blackhawks now this is really coming down to the experience factor yeah they made a little bit of lineup changes they brought in uh, some guys that hey they won cups with in the past right but you know I don't see Chicago coming out of the west this year but I do see them winning uh, the central division this year but maybe I'm wrong so on to the Pacific. Now, this one's not going to be a shocker, but I have Vegas coming in last in the Pacific this year. I really hope I'm wrong on this. I really hope uh, Vegas surprises a lot of people. But again, because it's a brand new franchise, you can't really say you know this franchise in and out or you know what uh, to expect when they hit the ice in the regular season. Yeah, we have a lot of familiarity with a lot of their roster actually correct that we have familiarity with all of their roster because hey these guys were part of uh, other NHL teams not that long ago you know they have solid goaltending and Marc-Andre Fleury maybe they could surprise us but basically just for the fact they're brand new and I'm not really sure what all to expect from them uh, I'm putting them in last in the Pacific Next up, and second last, I have the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will look at this and say, oh my God, he hates Vancouver, just because I kind of, you know, rhymed about them in, in the past. But I see Vancouver doing absolutely nothing but this for the foreseeable future. They had their shot at the Cup, uh, of course, losing out to the Boston Bruins. But, you know, Sedin Twins are not getting any younger. And to me, that franchise is 100% completely in a rebuild mode. So for many years to come, I'd say at least four or five, give or take, uh, I don't see Vancouver doing anything in the Pacific Division, let alone uh, the Western Conference. Next up, I have San Jose. Uh, San Jose really had their shot in 20, uh, 2016. Uh, losing out to the Pittsburgh Penguins and sadly I see San Jose kind of doing a, a decline now you know Joe, Thor Joe Thornton's not getting any younger uh, Patrick Marlowe's best hockey in my opinion are, is behind him and now Patrick Marlowe's not even part of that organization uh, that was a bit of a big loss uh, to me uh, if I look at the San Jose lineup you know Marlowe being there well his whole career uh, you know they're kind of losing out on what Marlowe would bring to the club but to me yeah he's a great fit in Toronto but uh, that's completely another story because I think he's really overpaid uh, by the Toronto Maple Leafs. So next up I have the LA Kings. Uh, you know, I, the LA is not the powerhouse that it once was. Um, you know, I don't see them making the playoffs. I see them just kind of hovering uh, below that bar. Uh, I see them really doing a lot of changes over the next several years because, uh, I mean, they have a few guys on that team that are starting to age. And, you know, I did make a uh, question why they brought in Jerome McGinley last year. Um, you know, I, I've questioned quite a few uh, decisions that the LA Kings have made. Uh, sadly, I just kind of see them just outside the bubble for the next few years. So next up, I have Arizona. See that, Neil? I called them Arizona, not Phoenix. The Arizona Coyotes would be fourth in the Pacific Division. They made a lot of incredible changes in the offseason. And I think it's brought them right up to that point where they're going to be just inside the playoff picture or just outside the playoff picture. So kudos to Arizona for the changes that they've made in the offseason. I think they're going to be a very competitive club uh, for the next few years.
So third place in the Pacific Division, I have the Calgary Flames. Now this makes me happy because I'm a big Calgary fan. Of course, there's all kinds of nonsense going on in Calgary about arenas and relocation or that sort of thing. But I don't think that's going to alter the Calgary Flames and their mission. And their mission is going to be causing chaos in the Pacific Division. And uh, with their young core of amazing talent, uh, I see them finishing third. So next up, I have Anaheim. Now, Anaheim to me is still one of the strongest teams in the entire Western Conference. Uh, yeah, you know, you got guys like Getzlaff and Perry who aren't exactly, you know, 22, 23 years old anymore. But they have that amazing ability to just kind of settle into a game. And if they want to, if Ryan Getzlaff wants to, he can basically take over a game on any single night. And of course, they do have a ton of experience under their belt, whether it's Olympic gold or winning a Stanley Cup. Uh, so that really plays into a lot of things. Now, the hottest team, in my opinion, in the entire Western Conference I have is first in the Pacific, and that is the Edmonton Oilers. I think Edmonton is going to be first in the Pacific. I think they're going to uh, potentially go after Chicago for first in the West. I'm still on the fence if I should be stating if Edmonton will finish first in the West. I don't know about that. I mean, there's a lot of excitement in Edmonton right now, and why shouldn't there be? Because they have the best player there. I said it. The current best player in the world, Connor McDavid. So if you have the current best player in the world, I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz around your franchise. And with what they're building in Edmonton, they're looking better all the time. However, to me, I think one area that they really need to address in Edmonton will be their blue line. So, you know, around trade deadline and whatnot, if that's something that they address and address correctly, uh, Edmonton could be a force, you know, this year come playoff time. Uh, you know, last year they definitely got their feet wet with uh, playoff atmosphere. And for a lot of players, including McDavid, that was their first taste of playoff action. And to me, the Edmonton Oilers can hold their heads up high because I thought they did phenomenal in the playoffs. However, if they did have a little bit more experience on their side, I really think they could have went uh, a lot further. So those are my uh, predictions for how the teams will finish from top, excuse me, from bottom to top in both the uh, Central and Pacific Division in the Western Conference. That was a lot of fun, I must say, and that's the first time I've ever done uh, predictions before a season actually started. So hopefully this could be a, a yearly thing maybe. So next up, I'll be doing the Eastern Conference, so check out for that in the uh, near future. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thank you, Justin, very much for doing that. really appreciate it, you taking the time to do that and, and uh, reveal your predictions. Uh, it's going to be an interesting season, and it's going to be interesting to see who's closest with their predictions. I don't think any of us expect to be right, but we at least try it because it's fun. Yeah. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you in the future. Adios.